Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing Botanicum, the brand new book by Maria Troll, a Swedish illustrator. Now Maria is most famous for her previous three colouring books, which are Nightfall or Skimmingtilsamen. <laughs> Let me try that again. Skimming till summon. Skimming Timson. Anyway, it's called Nightfall in uh, in the UK or English. Um, also, Blomster Mandala, a little bit easier, uh, which is translated to Twilight Garden in the UK, and also Vivi Soka en Van which is, I think Vivi has a friend. So three previous books, this is her brand new one, Botanicum. It is exactly the same size, shape and format as all those Swedish books we've come to know and love. So Hannah Carlson's books, um, very, very similar production quality. So uh, the actual size of the book is 21 and a half centimetres by 25 and a half centimetres. It has a beautiful hardback cover. It also has um, the writing along the spine there and again on the back a little uh, coloured elements. So all of the elements on here are glossy but the actual cover itself is matte textured. We open up the book to the opening black pages as we do in all of these Swedish colouring books printed by uh, Printworks. I think Printworks uh, are the printers and Pagina are the publishers. So exactly the same paper as we know from uh, Hannah Carlson's books. I'll come to explain that later on in the review. So here on the first set of pages we have a beautiful little dragon and I believe that this says for my family. So this is obviously a little bit of um, um, not a, a thank you but a dedication to her family. And here we've got this book belongs to a little tag here so you can write your name. So the book is double sided as you'll see, as are most of these Swedish colouring books. So this actual book is all about botanics, plants, animals, um, but mainly plants and different types of botanical um, flowers and things like that. So as we all know Maria Troll absolutely loves her gardening, her botanics, and this book really is a testament to that. Now, as you can see, I've already coloured this one. I actually painted it. So I painted this with the Gansai Tambi gouache watercolours, and it took to the paper really, really well. It's got a nice shine to it, and there was no bleed through on the other side. So you can paint in these books, it can be done. As you can see, nothing on the other side. And here's another page that I've completed already. I actually did this with mild liners, which are actually highlighters for journaling. And I just thought I wanna try and limit myself to five colors and see what I can do with highlighters rather than coloring pens. And this turned out really, really well. I quite like the um, Scandinavian look to it. It's very simple, very uh, limited colors. I will be doing a video on colouring with mild liners because it has been requested by quite a few of you. Now the mild liners didn't bleed through, there's some slight shadowing but that can be covered up by a background and to be honest the shadowing is only really where I pressed quite hard and did quite a few layers with the pens. <coughs> Excuse me. So going through the book as you can see we've got um, we've got birds, we've got plants, animals, insects, lots and lots of flowers, lots of leaves. Some of the images are much more simple than others. Some of them take up the entire page and some of them are centered onto the page. And you can actually open this book up quite flat. So it's quite good for actually coloring flat as well. It's not gonna flap back on you. So some of the pages are completely centered on plants and some of them do have these elements of people. I absolutely adore this little girl sat in the flower, a bit like Thumbelina. We do have some very Vivi reminiscent um, illustrations of girls here. I'm not sure whether it's meant to be Vivi or someone else. Now look at this, absolutely gorgeous. We've got the tree trunk with the fairy doors and windows, the little fairy here, tiny weeny little ladder. We've got a mouse, just so, so cute. If you love whimsical illustrations, you will love this book, but I think mainly it is for plant lovers. So Maria's books often do have black and white mixture of backgrounds. 
and this one is no exception. I love this illustration being contained in this fancy border. So if you do like colouring your plants and leaves, this is an ideal book for you. There's lots and lots of different types of species of plants and animals. And as you'll see as we come to the end of the book, all of them are actually labelled as well. So you can actually refer to an image online and see exactly what colours uh, these flowers are supposed to be. So you can do them quite realistically. Another sort of beautiful opulent framed one here with a gorgeous background. You could make that into a galaxy. You could make it into beautiful sky blue and a lovely castle here as well. So we're not just having the the plants and the flowers in this book. It is very centered on plants and flowers, but there are other elements, buildings, people as well. I love this one of the cat sat on top of this wall. We've got the ivy. Uh, we've got some roses growing up the wall. Beautiful, beautiful images. We've got a little uh, fairy or a little miniature girl in between these big leaves here, just holding on to the dew drops. Love this country farmhouse barn type illustration as well. So the book actually um, is described as taking you through the seasons and how these seasons change according to the wildlife and the plants that occur in different times of the year. Look at these cute little dragons. So they're from the, the front of the book that I showed you with the acknowledgement. So beautiful little sweet dragons, how cute. You usually see massive dragons in colouring books, but it's really nice to see these little baby dragons. So we've got a bit of a beanstalk theme going on here. We've got a greenhouse with the watering can in the foreground. Brilliant gardener's colouring book this. Love all of these little fish in this uh, another frame border here. This one's quite a funny one. So we've got a little uh, a little house homestead growing out of this guy's bald head. <laughs> a little bit weird, but I love how the boat is moored onto his ear. Cute little detail. Some more black pages here, and we have a unicorn. Everybody is massively into unicorns at the moment. I used to be, and then when it became like just everyone's into unicorns, I just I sort of got bored of it now. Here we've got a little pumpkin house, so I'm guessing we're coming into the autumnal flowers here. We've got some pears. I love how this bird cage has been opened and the birds have actually escaped. We've got some uh, Christmassy type wreaths here. This is really sweet, colouring in your traditional Christmas colours and another spherical shape with the little foxes in there as well, love foxes. We've got a frog in a crown, so the frog prince maybe. And here she comes over to kiss the frog, I believe. We have a nighttime scene here with the fox, or is it a wolf or a fox? I think it's got two short ears to be a fox, so it must be a wolf looking up at the moon. We've got this beautiful, um, going to come to me swallow bird um, picking the bowl of cherries lovely little simple lighthouse scene I think a, a very stormy sort of sky would look brilliant with that and really sort of take over the image I love these waves as well around the mermaid she's holding the ship in her hand we've got a sort of a stacked up town here and then a girl looking out of the window feeding the birds surrounded by all this beautiful ivy. So the paper, as I said I was going to mention, exactly the same as other Swedish colouring books. Very, very smooth, not much of a tooth there for pencils, but you can use them, they work fine. Uh, great for water-based markers, just don't push too hard or you will see that shadowing. It also has a very creamy uh, texture to the book, creamy colour. So it's ivory, it's off-white, it's not bright white. Another dark background again. We've got the little uh, fairy or the little gnome sleeping in her hammock between some very delicate uh, grass blades there. So just imagine how light and small she must be. We've got her sat on top of a mushroom house here with a cute little chimney. And the little stash of acorns in this mushroom as well, a little detail there. 
I love this one. So we've got these beautiful forest sort of trees. I know they've got a name, can't remember. Um, but down here, the rocks and the base of the tree, you can actually see faces in them. So it's like, it's like everything is alive and magical. Another sphere here with a moose, someone in the boat having a little fish and a little sort of log cabin on the edges there. Beautiful Halloween, quite fun illustration. We've got the pumpkins with the carved faces, the candles. Not sure what these flowers are. We've got the ghost and the bat. I absolutely adore this girl. She is absolutely beautiful. I love her cloak. She's holding an owl, one of my favorite animals. And all the snowflakes are coming down now. So we're coming into the winter months. And yep, we've got the Christmassy, very ferny. I'm not sure what these are. Um, ferny uh, wreath that is the word um i think are they are those ferns what come with pine cones uh, pine ferns maybe maybe that's it um and we have little ornaments hanging from the pine firs as well now at the back i did mention that there was a bit of a glossary of different types of flowers and leaves now what is kind of annoying is that none of these pages are actually numbered but the numbers in the back correspond to whatever plant or flower or insect is on that page so you sort of have to count go through and count yourself and try and find um which page this is talking about but um as you can see all of the flowers are actually translated but they are at the moment in swedish there are a few uh, English translations here but um, you do also have the are they called the species name the, the specimen name the type you know the weird Latin name for all of the flowers so they're all in here as well so you could probably google those Latin names and find out exactly what flowers they are so we do have um, also a register of insects so we've got the flowers and the botanics then we've got all the insects as well and then on the back here, we finally have our colour testing page where you can test out all of your mediums, your paints, markers, anything, just to check that there won't be any bleed through. And then we have the back of the book. So that is the book in its entirety. You can buy this for the cheapest price I found on Adlibri, which is a Swedish bookseller, and it's the cheapest one I've found so far. So it's about around about £10.50. Uh, with free shipping so you can get this for just over a tenner which I think is a really good price and that's around about $14 so I will leave the link in the description below you can also get it from Printworks but it's slightly more expensive at £13.59 or $18 now there isn't currently any plans to translate this into English so usually with Swedish colouring books a publisher will pick it up and translate them to English and you'll find them on Amazon and places like that but there's no plans at the moment to do that with Botanicum hopefully there will be in the future so that we can all get this a little bit cheaper but I think for now £10 not a bad price at all for the quality of the book and the illustrations as well do leave me a comment let me know what you thought of the book if you're a fan of Maria's if you think this um, stands up to her previous work which I definitely think it does and also click the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.